Oh, the piggies are in, that's so cute. <laughs> so hopefully I'll be uploading this video on the 19th of October, 2020, which will mark 25 years since I appeared into the world, which means I have kind of put pressure on myself to finish this video in a week's time. But you know what? That's fine. I could do that. I think I will be 25, obviously. I saw Ariel Bissette's video recently and it was 25 things I've learned in 25 years. And I was like, that is an amazing video concept. I do a lot of overthinking. It's one of my favorite things to do. It's actually not, it's one of the, my least favorite things. If I'm not doing something, the first thing my brain goes to is like, let's overthink everything you've ever done and every conversation you've ever had. Like you don't know anything about social interaction, which you know, I don't because autism. <laughs> but you live and you learn. So today's video, I'm going to go through the 25 things I've personally learned in 25 years. Let's begin with the list. Number one, gut feelings should never be ignored. Never really understand what people meant when they said gut feeling. I thought they were talking about indigestion, but it turns out when you're doing something or seeing someone, going to an event where you feel uncomfortable, that uncomfortableness is generally the gut feeling. I think I've read somewhere that your gut is actually extremely responsible for your emotions. I think my interest in health and fitness came to the the surface and was like, hey, you should probably pay attention to your gut need in a physical imbibing and eating way. But in a mental health way, I was like, I should really be paying attention more to my gut. If you ever have an instinctive feeling that something's wrong, then never ignore it. You will feel worse down the line. Number two, there's no such thing as too many if you like it. For example, books. They are occluded from your general viewing capacity right now, but I have many, 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 many books. And to be honest, the more books I buy, the happier I am, the pure headedness I am. Basically it takes that I should just keep my books and honestly, I love them. If you have a savings goal, which I'll go on to later, you do have to cut back on buying things if they're like cutting into that goal. At the end of the day, if something makes you happy, we all exist for no reason. So you might as well make it happy. Cool. Number three, don't self-reflect in the evenings. The blah awakens. What I call my anxiety demon is the blah. And the blah came about because I used to watch obsessively the Demented Cartoon movie, which by the way, best cartoon, literally the stupidest thing ever. And my dad picked up on the fact that I kept going blah, cause that's like part of it. Also, I've just realized in the Demented Cartoon movie, the stick men lose their heads when they say blah. So that's a bit ironic. My dad picked up on that and he kept calling uh, <laughs> my worry periods the blah and then the blah stuff. I think when I went to therapy when I was younger, my psychologist who was really nice said to visualize the worries instead of thinking thinking they're part of your brain, kind of separating them out. And I named it the blah because that's just what I did. It just comes out in the evenings. It's always about seven o'clock to 10 o'clock. I'm just like, well now I feel crap. When I'm stressed about anything, I tend to be quite active during the day. I'm like trying to do things like work. And as soon as I have my downtime, you're worried about this now, this thing that probably will never happen or this thing that did happen and you should really be over it by now. And your brain is just like, it's just horrendous and it comes not every day. When I was younger, definitely it was basically every evening. Nowadays, it kind of just happens randomly. And knowing that that is something separate to my brain has really helped. That was one of the best mechanisms I found. Don't do th anything too deep with your brain in the evening. Save that for the morning when you're a lot more switched on and refreshed. Most people have no clue what they're doing, number four. This is true. And I've increasingly realized this as I've gotten older. I still think adults seem to know a lot more than me about basic stuff. That's just because I'm autistic and I don't see the relevance of like 90% of things that people care about. Sometimes I'm just having a conversation with a customer at work and I suddenly have this bing realization and I'm like, you don't know why we're here, what we're doing, where we're going. We're all improvising. A lot of the rules for life are not even rules. They're just things that people tend to do by habit. And no one cares. No one knows what they're doing. There's no rules for anything. Is this what this, tip is apparently five politeness always wins even when you really don't like a person or you really don't want to help a person you should do it not for your own self-satisfaction although obviously that's a byproduct and you're gonna get more benefit from the outcome than if you just were annoyed at a person for instance <laughs> the number of times i'm late for something and then i have to run to catch the bus or something and then someone walks in front of me and i'm like oh god you're like in my way it's not their fault like i just say sorry and then they're like oh no that's cool and i'm like oh i'm going to work and then sometimes you even have a chat maybe not if you're running late my point is politeness is key. So endearing in a person as well. Other people, if you see other people being polite, you're just like, you're a cool bean. Life continues. Six. Oh God, this is deep. Relationships are best when they're equal. This can be any kind of relationship in your life. Co-workers, even if you're on a different hierarchy from each other. Romantic relationships, best friendships. You have to be giving the same as you're receiving because otherwise you'll feel extremely shortchanged and exhausted. Always 
give your all and then receive their best from them and if you're not getting enough from them tell them seven school is for learning and anything else gossip etc is what is this gap? Luckily I took this very much to heart and basically was a massive nerd in school. That was pretty much how I coped, by just learning the things they were teaching me and then even going above and beyond on BBC Bite Size. <laughs> wow, that's a throwback. And all the other stuff that went on at school that was so unnecessary, like gossiping, in groups, saying teachers are terrible, like you don't need to get into any of that. Like you can if you want to. School is primarily there to A, get you off your parents' backs and B, to teach you something. This is what is priming you to learn. It's the way that your brain is formed. Lena Norms just did an amazing video actually about school and how it's a bit stupid. I'll link that down below because that was amazing. Basically how terrible the British school system is and what we should do to improve it. Eight, inanimate objects don't hate you. <laughs> the number of times I have gone in the shower, put my shampoo on the bottom of the shower and I kicked it over and I immediately go straight to that stupid shampoo bottle has ruined my life and now my day has added like five extra seconds onto it because the shampoo bottle's on the floor and that doesn't matter. It's not the bottle's fault, the bottle is inanimate. I think it's to do with absorbing blame for yourself as well. Am I just thinking this instinctively because I don't want to make myself look like a terrible stupid person who just doesn't know how to control their body? Number nine, exercises are the closest you feel to being very young and free again. When I don't exercise, which recently I haven't been doing as much because I've been so busy, I just feel awful, tired, unmotivated. As soon as I go on a, like a short run or go to the gym or something, and I get those endorphins, that kind of thing affects my mood so positively and it really reminds me of when you're a kid and you run around in parks or with your friends and you're like inventing things and having imaginative play. So happy and so relaxed. Try and find a way that you enjoy exercise. 10. Being an introvert is perfectly valid. I mentioned the book Quiet by Susan Cain in my last video about the quiet revolution and how basically the world is not made for introverts. You are an amazing individual regardless of whether you like being around people or whether you don't like being around people. I used to really chastise myself not going out and doing stuff. Like as soon as my friend would invite me to something I'd be like, I'm going now. It burned me out so bad. You don't have to be around people to be happy and you can just accept that as your personality. Number 11, those jokes that come to you instinctively, just say them. Vividly remember my first day of secondary school for one of the reasons was when we had to sit in a circle and do that extremely cringy kind of game and you have to say who you are and all this I made some joke before I made this joke everyone was looking at me like who's that what is she wearing why is her hair all messed up she says now with this massive splinge <laughs> and as soon as I opened my mouth and said whatever that silly joke was I could feel the tension release I looked around everyone was smiling and like not everyone laughed obviously it wasn't the most amazing joke in history but it just really changed the atmosphere and ever since that moment I've been like I really like making people laugh and I really like making people smile I always feel better having said the joke than I do like just being a boring person who hasn't said the joke and then the atmosphere has continued being this flatlining thing unless it's really offensive and you can kind of tell from point number one your gut feeling that it's gonna go down terribly just say it because opportunities are fleeting in life number 12 saving money can be more fun than spending it I never used to really save money well say that I had a savings account but I wasn't really using it properly now I have savings pots for all kinds of goals and it's made me so much happier knowing that I'm heading to towards something that I've saved up for meticulously and put aside every month. It just really helps my mental health. 13. You will survive any mental health hiccup or life event. I have had periods of my life where I have been in pits of depression and I've also had like an awful breakup. You do feel like things will never go back to how they were when I was happy. Things will always be at this horrific point. You've got to trust the process and you've got to be patient with calming methods and strategies you will be able to get past these moments. Number 14, you will find friends or people who click with you instantly. Sometimes you meet someone and you're like, we have exactly the same sense of humor. We have the exact same way of speaking. You've got to cherish them. Give them everything because they're your people. Number 15, ask for what you want. People are not mind readers. This is to do with the theory of mind aspect of my autism, I suspect. I just like presume people know my plans or my schedule. You can't read people's minds. You've got to get to the crux of the issue. Number 16, hydration. I used to really abuse the fact that you meant to drink a lot of water. I used to drink like four litres of water a day. That is not a litre. That's like not even close. Like, I don't know what a litre is. Point is, I drank way too much water. If you feel dehydrated, apparently you're already in like a pretty bad way and you should probably drink something. So when people say they're thirsty, I'm like, oh, you should have drank way before that. Hydration is so important. I really believe that. Just don't abuse it like I did. Balance is key. Number 17, there is a lesson to be learned from everything. This is true. 18. Hair is just hair. 
I had a fringe cut in, as you can see. It actually looks quite nice now. When I first had it done, it was a bit debatable. It grows back. My fringe is already so long. I used to have really long hair. I don't remember if it's documented on this channel or not, as if I made a documentary about my hair. In early videos, you might have seen how long my hair was, and I was obsessed with keeping it long. It was really fussy, so I just cut it off. And honestly, it's been a game changer. Hair is just hair. It just grows back. It's just keratin strands. Do what you will with it. 19, grades are a benchmark and not a goal. I was obsessed in secondary school with getting A stars in all of my subjects. Even now, sometimes I think like, oh, if only I'd done more revision on my maths, I could have gotten an A star. No, I put as much effort in as I could and that was what I ended up with. Grades and particularly grade predictions are a benchmark to head for. Aim for it. Don't be disappointed if you do your all on something and you still end up getting like not in your opinion good grade. The way systems assess your work, particularly school systems, very arbitrary so it's no reflection of you as a person. 20. People, particularly in retail, just want to have something by the end of it, just want to gain something. Sometimes I get a customer and I'm just like I do not know what you want and then you figure it out and you can go from there and if you can't get it just apologize. 21. Timetables help. Sort of. When I was in the IB, I always remember having a one-to-one -one with my tutor and he said, make a revision timetable. Make sure you study this, this, and this every day. I can't do that, man. My sense of time is very strange. It's all over the place. I can't just be like, on Monday I'm studying higher English and on Tuesday I'm studying French. Like that is not the way any of my brain neurons work. Unfortunately, I've never really found a timetable system that works for me. What I have discovered is that you don't have to have a concrete timetable, but you can like visualize one. So for instance, I'm always sort of free on a Sunday. So I just film a video like I'm doing right now. Another thing I've discovered is that I'm my own worst enemy when it comes to procrastination. Sometimes I watch a video on the internet and I'll be like, by the end of this video, I'm gonna do this. And I just don't do it. Just do the thing. Number 22, just do it. Like, just do the thing. You have an idea in your head, just do the thing. You wanna ask someone something, just do the thing. You wanna comment on someone's thing, just do the thing. I used to be so racked with nervousness about interacting with anybody, assuming anyone wanted to talk to me or listen to what I had to say. And now I'm just like, I'm just gonna ask you. What's the worst that can happen? You just don't like me. Oh no. Number 23, bodies are all equal. I love the body positivity movement. Hello. We have people of all shapes and sizes out in the world now and they're just flaunting their stuff. Some of my favorite Instagram accounts are like, Bryony Gordon, Lizzo, obviously. Everyone has a different body and they're all valid. Number 24, write or make what you know. The number of times I've tried to write something just hasn't worked because I haven't been in that situation or I haven't consumed enough media about the situation. And things I'm interested in, things like gender, I'm really interested in family dynamics, I'm really interested in suburbia and what that means for culture. Those are the things I find so exciting and I want to write about those things. Queer narratives, those are the things that I've thought about the most, that I've studied the most, at university back in those days. In a video vein, obviously I know a lot about autism, I've read tons about it and I know a lot about it because I live it daily. Making videos about autism is probably one of the easiest things that I feel like making at the moment. Finally, number 25, and no, it is not cut your friends. Authenticity is key. I have a bit of a quirky personality to put it mildly and I have a very strange sense of humour and as soon as I started embracing that and putting it out into the world welcomed with open arms and I don't know why I went through the whole of high school just feeling like I couldn't be myself and feeling like I couldn't just express all of my so-called weird quirks and stuff being some kind of people pleasing plant. Do you? I whisked through those. I'm sorry that they were a bit vague in some respects. I hope this was enjoyable. I am excited actually to reach 25 years old. And no, I don't really care that I'm turning 25. In some respects, I'm kind of happy. My name is Neve. Please subscribe if you like my content. Yeah, happy birthday to me. I didn't dress up at all. Does anyone else hate the birthday song? Like whenever people used to sing that, I used to hide under the table. Thanks for watching. Please check out any of my other videos and I will see you hopefully soonish. Goodbye, friends.